Hey there, is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together, following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired Word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out His plan for us. So welcome to church. We have come to give you praise this morning. We have come to give you all the honor and all the glory that is shown to your name this morning, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The reason we live is to worship you this morning, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That you rose from the dead this morning, Jesus. You rose this morning, God. You are alive this morning, Jesus. Come on. Somebody give my praise. Lift your hands and give my praise this morning. He deserves it this morning. He deserves your worship this morning. He deserves your praise from the rising of the sun unto the setting and the burning of the same this morning. Your name is higher than any other name this morning, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah this morning, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we bless your name this morning. So welcome to online viewers this morning. It's always a joy and a privilege to have you joining with us this morning. We treat the name of our risen King today. One who died and rose triumphantly from the grave this morning. Conquer hell, sin, death, and the grave this morning. We encourage you to share the link this morning. Share the link with somebody this morning. Hallelujah. As we continue to worship and continue to praise him this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah this morning. Every praise is due our God this morning. Hallelujah. So we're going to clap. We're going to sing. We're going to worship God this morning. Hallelujah this morning, Jesus. Come on. Resurrection Sunday this morning. We serve a resurrected king this morning. The one true and living God this morning. That's why we say every praise is you are God this morning. Every praise is you are God. And every word of worship with one and God. Every praise. Sing it now, sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah to our Come on, help me. Glory, hallelujah, as you are God. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise is you are God. Somebody sing it again. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory. Glory, hallelujah, to you are God. Every Yeah. 
worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise. Come on, this morning, every praise. This morning, it's you above. Come on, somebody give him praise. On this resurrection Sunday this morning, the song says every praise. Every praise is you above this morning. Hallelujah. We come to worship him this morning. We come to worship the resurrection king this morning. Hallelujah this morning, Jesus. Come on, give him praise this morning. Hallelujah this morning, Jesus. Oh, we bless your name this morning. Hallelujah this morning. So we're going to lift our hands this morning. We're going to dance this morning. We're going to praise the name of the Most High God who's resurrected this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah this morning, Jesus. Hallelujah this morning, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's clap our hands this morning. Hallelujah this morning. Come on, we're going to give him praise this morning. That's what you come through this morning. Come to praise our risen King this morning. Quiet this morning. Come on, let me hear you sing it. 
King this morning. Come on, somebody give my praise this morning. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah this morning. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, we can do better than that. Somebody shout hallelujah. That's right, this morning. 
morning, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. It's a life this morning, a holiday this morning. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, we bless your name this morning, Jesus. He rose when the victors crown this morning, a holiday this morning. He rose from the dead as King of Kings and Lord of Lords this morning. They tried to stop him this morning. They tried, but they could not stop him this morning. He came to fulfill the plans of his father this morning. Hallelujah this morning, Jesus. Come on. Somebody give him a praise this morning, Jesus. Give him a praise on this resurrection Sunday this morning. Hallelujah this morning, Jesus. Come on now. You are always fighting for us. Come on. Heaven's angels all around. Tell him now. My delight is found in knowing. Tell him. That you wear the victor's crown. You're my help and my defense. Yes, he is. You're my savior and my friend. Come on, tell him. By your grace, I live and breathe to worship. That is part of the song this morning. Come on, help me now. At the mention of your name, in your name. In your name, I will Oh, come on, tell him. In your presence. Come on, tell him this morning. For you wear the victor's crown. Come on, tell him. Let your glory fill. Come on, tell him. Come on, tell him. Let your power overflow. Come on, sing it. By your grace, I live and pray to worship you. Somebody sing it now.
Raise those hands high this morning as you can this morning. Come on. Tell him thank you, Lord. Come on, sing it this morning. Let's go to sing it this morning. Hallelujah this morning, Jesus. Tell him thank you, Lord. With his hands raised this morning. Come on, nobody watching around this morning. Hallelujah this morning, Jesus. Hallelujah now. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Somebody tell him today, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell him, Lord, you have won it all for me. You see, Lord, death could not hold you down. They tried to hold you down. You are the praise and King. Somebody sing it now, see it now, see it in majesty. Because I know you are the praise and Lord. You are the praise and King. Somebody raise your voice and sing it with me this morning. Oh, yes, Lord. Somebody give him praise. Give the living king this morning. Give him praise this morning. He's our hope this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on. Somebody give him praise this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
earlier this morning, Jesus. He's our risen king this morning. That's why I serve him this morning. That's why I give him praise this morning, hallelujah, this morning. I love him this morning, hallelujah. There is none like him this morning. Come on, somebody give him praise this morning. Somebody give him praise this morning, Jesus. That's right, somebody give him praise this morning. If you love him this morning. Somebody give him praise if you love him this morning. If you love the risen king this morning. You love the risen king. Somebody give him praise. Somebody give him praise if you love him, if you love him, if you love him, if you love him. Give him praise. Give him praise today. Give him praise today because you love him. Jesus. My God today. My God, my God, my God, my God, I love you, Lord. How great a chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain. I cannot climb in desperation. I turn to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Come on, sing it now. Then through the darkness, your come on, sing it. this morning.
Father God, we give you thanks. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory this morning, Jesus. Thank you that you are our living hope today, God. And you rose triumphantly from the grave this morning, Jesus. So, Father God, we pray as you take joy, my King, this morning. As we worship you this morning, God. Oh, God, we say, have your own way this morning. Not my will, that none of us will be done here this morning, Jesus. But, Father God, we give you our praise. We give you all the honor that is shown to your holy name this morning, God. Because we know and believe that you are the resurrected King this morning. You are the true and living. God, this morning, Jesus, the Father, God, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, Lord. Lord, as we are about to hear your word this morning, Jesus, I know that you have given your humble servant a word for us today, this morning, God. And I pray, Lord, that you pour in to your humble servant, God, she comes and she pour out unto us, your people, this morning, even those who are viewing this morning, the God, Lord, this word, Lord, will truly mean something to them on a day like today, this morning, the God, because lives to come back to you this morning, God, will come to, to turn on their life this morning, to, to believe in you this morning, and to trust you more and more, Lord, we know that your word will do whatever you want it to do this morning, God, if to accomplish that, but to settle you this morning, God, we know that someone needs a word from you today, this morning, the God, someone needs to hear your word this morning, Father, God. So I pray this morning, God, as you will come forth this morning, God, it will go forth with power and authority this morning, God. There will be no hindrance this morning, God. There will be no obstacle this morning. There will be nothing to stop this word from reaching those who it needs to reach in the mighty name of Jesus this morning. We cancel every plan of the enemy this morning. Everything the devil threw against us this morning is a stepping stone to our victory this morning in the mighty name of Jesus because you are born all and Calvary this morning. You are born all and Calvary this morning. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your word, Lord. Your word, your word, your word. Your word. Your word. that is shown to your name this morning. I want us to keep in that attitude this morning. Keep in that attitude this morning, Jesus. Keep in that attitude this morning. Let's Hallelujah. welcome none of that this morning. And our pastor this morning, Pastor Jesus. Navisa, who's going to bring forth the word of God to you Hallelujah, this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, our living hope this morning. My living hope and your living hope this morning. Amen. Hallelujah, he's our living hope. Could you just sing that last verse again in that song this morning as we continue Hallelujah, to worship, Jesus. continue to lift up the Let's mighty and matchless name of Jesus. Just one verse this morning. Hallelujah. 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 I thank God, Jesus. I thank you for the worship of your people this morning, God. Oh, God, our living hope this morning. Our living hope this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the one who sets me free. Hallelujah. If he has set you free, just give him praise this morning. Hallelujah. You have Jesus, hallelujah.
mighty God we serve this morning. Let me say a pleasant good morning to each and every one of you. And welcome to Resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah. Jesus is alive. I don't know about you. I don't know if you believe it or not. But I want to say this morning, Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know the devil, hallelujah, hid those words this morning. Yes. But the resurrection is the devil's worst nightmare. Yes. And that is why we should shout it even louder. Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The cross was in the end. Yes. The devil thought so. Yes. Hallelujah. But it was only the beginning. You see, without Good Friday, there's not going to be no resurrection Sunday. 2,000 years ago, a Sunday like this one, hallelujah, did Jesus walk out of the grave triumphantly. He walked out victoriously. The tomb is empty this morning. Hallelujah. The angel said, why are you seeking the living among the dead? He is not here. He is not here. He is risen. Just like he said he will this morning. No grave. No grave. No grave could hold his body down. Our Lord is alive this morning. He's seated on the right hand of the Father and he's making intercession for us. So today is a joy. A day is a, do a day of joy. It's a day of celebration. We are serving a risen Savior. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. I know you could say the same that he lives within your heart this morning. If you believe it, clap your hands for Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Today is a day of celebration. We are in the house to celebrate. I don't want to see you quiet. I don't want to hear you quiet. I want to see somebody jump up and run around, make some laps. Hallelujah. With excitement in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You have no law against that this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. You may have your seat. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Again, a pleasant good morning, and, our, and uh, we are so blessed and we are so privileged this morning uh, to be in the house of the Lord on this resurrection day. I'm excited this morning. I'm excited this morning. Praise God. Let me say welcome, welcome to each and every one of you that are here. Those of you might be looking at us online this morning, I say welcome to you as well. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that you're here. Just want to ask you to, to please share the link this morning. You know, give the thumbs up. Send the link to your friends and family so they too can be blessed this morning. Hallelujah. Praise God. Some time ago, I read this account. And I want to share it with you this morning. In the early years, in the first century maybe, it is said that when a servant serves his master a meal, he lays everything. He lays the table. I know some of you ladies like to lay the table, right, Deb? We lay the table, everything in place, the plates, the napkins, the cutlery, the vessels for with water, you know, everything, the food laid out this morning. Table well laid. And that servant will leave the room giving his master privacy. To have his meal. And then after some time, the servant will return back to the dining room to see if the master is finished. If the master is not in the room, what the servant does 
he goes to the table and he looks at the napkin. If the napkin is crumbled, it means that the master is finished with his meal. But if the master folds the napkin and he puts it back on the table, and if the servant comes in and he sees the folded napkin, he's saying, it tells him that, hey, I have finished yet. I'm coming back. <laughs> hallelujah. Can I tell you this morning, hallelujah, that when the disciples went to the tomb and they saw the stone that was rolled away, the disciples looked inside and what they saw in John 20 verse 7 they said, and the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen cloth, not lying with the rest of the cloth, but wrapped together and placed by itself. Can I tell you this morning that the napkin was folded separately? Can I tell you this morning, Jesus got up from the tomb and he folded the napkin, indicating that I am finish yet uh, are still here are still alive uh, my mission is not completed uh, are coming back uh, it's not final uh, I still have work to do somebody shout hallelujah throughout history there has never been a more powerful event than the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, never throughout history. Jesus did what no other ever do. No other small g ever did. The only empty tomb is the borrowed one that Jesus used and was buried in. The only empty tomb that Jesus walked out from is that tomb of Joseph Arimathea. I want to let the church know and those online, Jesus is still alive today and well. Hallelujah. And he will live forevermore. The resurrection of Jesus holds so many profound significance for us as believers. Because I feel there's so much. I started to prepare, Pastor Dennis, and there's so much information. I just closed it and I say, you know what? I'm not sharing. It's too much. It's too much. It's plenty. If you know what Jesus did for you on Calvary, if you know what the empty team, the empty tomb means to you, I tell you, you will be jumping and skipping for joy. The resurrection gives us assurance of eternal life. You see, we were all doomed. But because Jesus rose from the grave, we have also will raise from the grave. We have eternal life. The resurrection validates Jesus' sacrificial death on the cross, providing forgiveness for our sins. All, we have all sins are forgiven as long as you confess them before the Lord, he will forgive. The resurrection validates that. It seals that. That thing can't change no more. That is sign and seal. And delivered. The resurrection gives us victory over sin and death. Hallelujah. The grave could not hold him. Through faith in him we receive forgiveness and freedom. The resurrection gives us freedom. The resurrection has taken us out of bondage of sin and given us freedom. The resurrection transforms our life and, and our conversations and our witnesses. Whatever we talk and say and live, it is through the resurrection of the power of God, of Jesus. Hallelujah. The resurrection gives us hope. As we sang the song this morning, hope beyond the grave. 
that one day there's an eternal home in heaven waiting for you and I this morning. We generally hear more of these resurrection um, messages. We hear about the cross more during this Easter time. We hear about how Jesus paid that incredible price. We are, well, some of you were here on our Good Friday. We would have heard all that Jesus said on the cross. But I want to say this morning, resurrection is not only an Easter story. To be taught once a year. Because for every one of us, every believer, whether we recognize it or not, it's our daily, you know, truth. It's our lifeline. It's our hope. The very fact that Jesus rose from the dead, it constantly reminds us that no matter what we face today, tomorrow, the rest of our life, we know that Jesus is our steadfast hope. He conquered death. He rose again again victorious and only he Jesus hold the power to make all things new hallelujah this morning I'm reading from the gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 20 hallelujah oh glory this morning I want to I want you to praise God I want you to worship God hallelujah because God has a word for the church this morning. Hallelujah. Matthew 28, chapter 28, verses 1 to 20 says, In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door, and he sat on it. His countenance was like lightning, and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not, for I know that you seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here. He is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you in Galilee, and there you shall see him, for as I have told you. And they quickly departed from the sepulchre with fear and great joy. What a combination. With fear and great joy. And they did run to bring his disciples word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them saying, all hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshiped him. And Jesus said unto them, be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee and there shall they see him. Father, bless this word and let it, O oh God, come with anointing and power. Father, your word is alive, a quick and sharper than any two-edged sword. I pray today for every listening ear online and even here that this word, God, will have resurrection power. It will penetrate the heart and the lives of the people. I pray, God, this word, God, will come with clarity, power, and understanding that every word, God, will be received this morning. Father, I will decrease and you will increase. I pray God use me one more time in Jesus' name. Amen. So let us take it from where Jesus was on the cross. He breathed his last breath. And he said, Father, into, my, into your hands I commit my spirit. So it was Friday. It was Friday, 6 o'clock in the evening before the sun went down. And Jesus laid, and, G and they laid Jesus in the tomb. And he stayed there until Sunday morning, a day like today. The woman came to the tomb to anoint the body of Jesus. Which was the custom in those days. What they discovered changed their life forever. What they discovered changed our life 
also forever. So as we would have read in Matthew chapter 28, they met an angel at the tomb and the angel told them, hey, he not here. He not here. He is risen. Now, I want you to know something this morning. When the disciples saw that Jesus went through what he went through on Good Friday, they were hurt. They were hurt, they were broken, they were disappointed, they didn't know what to do. I mean, these people spent, these disciples would have spent three years with Jesus. They ate with him, they walked with him, they slept with him, they, they saw miracles, they prayed with him, they would have, they would have um, listened to him teach, you know, so many things. They would have seen the supernatural. And they would have built the hope that this is the Messiah. And when they saw what took place in the garden of Gethsemane, and when they saw what took place on the cross, the Bible said they were looking from afar off. They fled the scene. And they were looking, they saw the torture and the torment of Jesus. And it was too much for him to endure on the cross. And it was too much for them to bear, to see Jesus go through these things. You see, the disciples did not understand what Jesus was teaching them all along. He was teaching them about his crucifixion. He was teaching them about his resurrection. But they didn't understand. In Matthew 16, 21, I just want to, to share three scriptures how Jesus, what Jesus told them. And it says, from then on, Jesus began to point out to his disciples that it was necessary for him to go to Jerusalem and to suffer many things from the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed. And he raised and be raised from the third day. Raised from the third day. Matthew 17 22 to 23 says, and as they gathered together in Galilee, Jesus told them, the son of man is about to be betrayed into the hands of men. They will kill him. And on the third day, he will be raised up. And they were deeply distressed. So they're hearing all this Jesus teaching, but yet still, they still couldn't understand. Matthew 20 verses 18 to 19 says, see, we are going up to Jerusalem. The son of man will be handed, handed over to the chief priests and the scribes. And they will condemn him to death. And they hand him over to the Gentiles to be mocked, flogged and crucified. And on the third day, he will be raised. These are just three scriptures I shared. Because this is the whole point of Jesus coming to the earth. He came so that he can fulfill, you know, his mission on the earth to die for the sins of men and then be buried and raised again. Can I tell you this morning that the resurrection is what makes the crucifixion powerful. If there were no resurrection, we would not have been here this morning. So they doubted. They doubted that he was the Messiah. They couldn't understand what was happening. Surely, the Savior, the Son of God, the promised Messiah, he would not go through this. Just brutal suffering. And you know, they fled the scene. Even though, some even thought of going back fishing. That's how much what they saw, what went on in their mind. They say, see me? I make a mistake. You see me? That, that is not true, you know, because look what's going on. That is the Messiah? No way. Let me go back and fish, yes? For them, the death of Jesus meant it was over. It meant it is final. When they saw the body of Jesus taken off the cross and placed in the tomb, for them, this was the end. 
I want to pause here this morning and take this message in a different angle. I want to let you know there are times in our lives when we feel just like the disciples, when we feel that it is final. Is anybody here this morning, you ever felt like it's final? You reach a place where you feel there is no hope. You feel like the, that your situation has reached a dead end. You feel like you, you, you know, you, 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 on, a, on, on, a, on, a, on a dead end street that you can't really come out. Your back is against the wall. That's what I'm trying to say. Hopeless. Unlike, you know, and what make it even worse, they saw Jesus put on the, in the, to, the, to the tomb. And what made it worse is that the guards seal the tomb. They push the, ro the stone away. They put some cement or clay. I don't know if they had cement back then, but whatever they had. They sealed the tomb. And it made it worse. When you see that, you thought it final, but now, hey, it real final. Hallelujah. So many times we feel like things are final. What the doctor seemed to say seems final. Hallelujah. Circumstances surrounding your family, it feels final. You have reached the point where you saw the tomb seal. And it brought your fate to an abrupt end like the disciples. i going back. The tomb seal, that really can't work for me, Vic. That, that really ain't working out. I go on. I'm here to tell some of you that are here and even those looking online to hold on. Don't give up. It's not final. The, the, the sealed tomb is about to be open. Can I say it again this morning? The sealed tomb is about to be open. It's not final. God is about to cause that thing, that thing that you feel was dead, that thing that you feel was sealed up for years, is about to be opened up and is about to come to life. Come on, clap your hands. All because of the resurrection power of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to say 2024 resurrection service. God is getting ready to open up some sealed tombs. I don't know what is your sealed tomb this morning. God is getting ready to open up some sealed tomb. That place that what you feel it's over and done with. That thing that you take and you shelve it. And you say, no, you know what? No longer are looking forward for that. It's seal, the tomb seal. But I want to tell you because of the resurrection power, God is getting ready to open up. He's getting ready to open up some sealed tombs. Some sealed tomb. I want to come congregation this morning to shout open up, open up. come on open up. open up hallelujah Jesus I don't know how I don't know when but I know God has a way of working it out God has a way of making it happen. Where there seems to be no way, he knows how, he has a way. Where his ways are not our ways, his thoughts are not our thoughts. It's above us, it's above our thoughts, it's above our ways. His ways are past finding out. Let me pause today to tell you that when Jesus died on the cross and his blood dripped, hallelujah, and hit the earth. The blood of the creator. Hmm, hit the creation. The creator, God, the father, God, the son, God, the Holy Spirit. When his blood hit the creation, which is the earth. Hallelujah. The creation, which is the earth, began to tremble. It began to tremble. And the, the scripture says that the earth quake and the rock split. When Jesus' blood hit the earth, there was an earthquake. There was a shaking. The rock. 
split. Hallelujah. And there was another earthquake that took place. That when Jesus rose from the grave, this time it was a quake of victory this morning. Hallelujah. It was a quake of release this morning. It was a quake of new life this morning. A quake of triumph. A quake that was caused that seal tomb. That seal tomb to open up this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, give him a round of applause. This morning, God is saying, I'm about to cause some aftershocks. Ah. Oh, yes. He says, I'm about to cause some aftershock to take place. 2,000 years ago, there was some earthquake that opened some tomb. But now I'm going to cause some aftershocks. I'm going to cause some aftershocks to take place in your life. Somebody say aftershocks. I say it again. He says, I'm about to receive an aftershock. I'm about to receive an aftershock. You tell yourself today, tell your neighbor, I'm about to receive an aftershock. Aftershock is about to take place. Your miracle is about to happen. It's about to take place. Aftershocks will cause your spiritual prison doors to be open. Just as it did for Peter, Paul, Silas, all the others. God is about to open up some things that has been, has been sealed and that has us in prison. God is speaking to the believers this morning for this resurrection morning. Can I ask the question, what is keeping us behind the sealed tomb? Take a second. To think. What is keeping you behind the sealed tomb? What is keeping you that you just can't seem to come out? Jesus already made a way. Jesus already made the, the, the grave to open. The tombs are already open. And he says you are now free to go. I grant you freedom. This is what the resurrection is. It is freedom. It is liberty. Hallelujah. The scripture says whom the son set free is free indeed the tomb has been opened the seal has been removed and God saying is now giving us freedom this is what resurrection means it means freedom and yet still we're behind we inside the tomb We're holding on. What is keeping us? What is keeping us, you know, and keeping us inside the tomb when we have freedom? We're holding on to, to things that we should not hold on to. Some of us, we're holding on with offense and, 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 and unforgiveness. And, and we're holding on to the past. We're holding on to what the doctors say. And we're holding on for what we see, what our eyes can see. But that is not a faith walk. A faith walk is a walk. Even though I don't see it, I believe in it. That is the walk of faith. And God is saying, he said, whatever you're holding on to, he says, I said, let it go this morning it's keeping us inside hallelujah it's keeping us in prison it's keeping us beside inside the sealed tomb we got to know and we got to experience the power of the resurrection this morning it brings freedom this morning and the resurrection power is that everything that is dead, hallelujah, everything in your life that is dead must come to life. 
must come to life. Everything that is hopeless will become hopeful because of the resurrection. Everything that is impossible will become possible because of the resurrection. The resurrection has given us hope this morning. And we need to live in hope and in victory and not in defeat this morning. The earthquake has caused the sealed tomb and the prison doors to open. But you know what? We're still inside. We're still inside. We're holding on. We're holding on. Are you ready to go out? 20 years gone, we're holding on to the past. We're holding on. We're holding on to fear. We're holding on. You know, to, we, we, some of us, we're comfortable here. I really want to go to do nothing. We call for purpose, I say. We're comfortable to just sit down in church. Some of us, the devil whispering in our ears some things in our minds so that we can under, so, so we could forget ourselves and hear what he's saying. I want you to have the gift of discernment because what the devil is whispering in your ear, I say to this morning to cancel it. I say you need to grab hold of it and say, devil, move. Get out of my air. Get out of my head. Get out of my life. I will live and not die. I will go forward. Uh, I will be a, a, a victor and not a victim. Uh, I will do what God has called me to do this morning. Uh, when we stay in the tomb, this is what is going to happen. We are going to be listening to voices and many people, hallelujah, you see, you know, are suffering from mental illness and they're, they're so depressed. I'm saying today, cover the mind. You have the freedom. You have the victory this morning. It's keeping us inside the tomb because the devil keeps telling you, I can't do it. I can't do it. So we're in the tomb. The door open, we're still inside. The calling you have, it's in the tomb. The talent and the ability is given to us, it's in the tomb. Some of us, we know, we purpose, and you know what? It's in the tomb. The tomb, you're, you're being stayed in the tomb when Jesus already Open up the door and give us power and authority this morning. I said to get out of the tomb this morning. This resurrection 2024, you need to get out of the tomb. You need to get up and say, I'm walking out. I'm coming out. I'm getting out. I'm getting out of my dead state. I'm getting out of my prison. I'm getting out of this sealed tomb. It's open this morning. When Jesus hung on the cross and said, it is finished, he meant every single thing that he, was, that he was sent to do has been completed and has been paid in full. Everything. Everything that the devil has stolen from us has been restored because of the resurrection this morning. We are now walking in victory. We are now walking in victory because of the resurrection. We now have access to heavenly realm because of the resurrection. We have access to miracles. We have access this morning to the very throne of God. We have access with power and authority all because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Since Jesus... Resurrection 2,000 years ago, God has been causing some aftershock. The earth's still quaking. There's some spiritual quakes. God warning you, you know. He said, I'm warning you. I'm warning you. I'm shaking. I'm shaking. I'm shifting some things. I'm warning you. It's time, he says, it's time to get out of the tomb. I'm sending some, some, some aftershocks. There are some aftershocks that are happening in many of our lives today. Hallelujah. God say, I'm warning you. I'm warning you. It's time to come out. It's time to come out. There's going to be, you know, God doesn't do anything without giving us warning. You know that, right? It's time to walk in victory and it's time to accomplish all that God wants for you to do this morning. 
The resurrection has given us victory over the devil. I want you to know Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection were all part of the redemptive plan of God. When Adam gave over to Satan in the garden, whatever he gave over, he gave over the authority, he gave over the dominion, what God has given to them, he gave it over to Satan in the garden by disobedience. That was taken back by one perfect man's obedience. That is Jesus Christ. And God the Father, he reclaimed the blessings that was stolen in the garden and he got his family back. He got his family back. He gave us, he gave back the dominion. He gave us back the dominion, the power and the authority that is rightly belongs to you and I this morning. Come on, class is exciting. Clap your hands. He says, this is what was rightfully yours. This is what is rightfully yours. Power, authority, dominion, and power to put the devil under our feet. Power to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That is what the resurrection is all about. He defeated the devil. So we now have the authority and the power. But sometimes we're acting like, Outside children. You'll be their father. They know my father. Sorry to say. We, we don't know. That their father. That's their father. That, that is not my father. But my father reclaim. That is what his heart's desire in this whole message of salvation. He wanted to reclaim. He said, I want to reclaim my children. Everything that I have for them since Garden of Eden. I need to give it back to them. And he did it when he walked out of the grave 2,000 years ago. Hallelujah. When Jesus rose from the dead after being crucified, a voice echoed throughout the universe. It is finished. It is finished. It is finished. Jesus, you know, uh, left hell in shambles. Totally and completely destroyed. Satan was defeated. He was conquered. And he's under Jesus' feet. And because he's under Jesus' feet, he's under your feet. Why are you fighting? Why are you fighting a losing battle when Jesus already paid it all? When Jesus rose from the grave and gave us the victory? Why are we fighting? Listen what Colossians 2.15 says. He says, having... This is what the resurrection did, eh? Having... Disarm principality and powers. He made a public spectacle of them. Triumphing, triumphing over them. He triumphed over the devil. He triumphed over principalities. He triumphed over powers. He triumphed over the kingdom of darkness. He disarmed every power that could take a stand against us. All you hear that scripture? He disarmed the devil. It, we always say it since I'm growing up. We'll hear them say it. It's like a dog barking without no teeth. He come into rush. Okay, like, like your little pot tongue. Rushing. Rushing. He come into rush and want to bite to get us scared. And you know when you reach up, if you run, he can run behind you. And that's what the devil does. But he disarm, did you know the Lord pull out all his teeth? He had no teeth to bite this morning. Hallelujah. God disarm him. We got to know the power of the resurrection, but yet still, we're living in fear. We live in, you know, like, like the enemies have, have us under, under our feet, under his feet, where it's supposed to be the other way around. Amen? So Satan has been totally defeated. It's done with him. He has no power over us unless you and I give it to him. He waiting, you know. The minute you see a door, bam, he gets in. 
we give him it. We give him it. But other than that, he is already defeated. And we got to live in that finished work. We got to live in the work of the resurrection power. We got to live like we have power and not defeat. We got to live like we have the victory over the enemy this morning. And I would always say, some people question what Jesus did on Saturday. What Jesus did yesterday while he was in the tomb. Well, many theologians are still deliberating, they're still debating, they're still speculating. But you know what I always say, Pastor Dennis? That is the day that Jesus descended into hell. Hmm. Hallelujah. While Satan and his cohorts were celebrating the death of Jesus, the Son of God, they had a big party in hell. Party going on in hell. And I want you to imagine a party in hell. If party here does be how it is, you could imagine what it is in hell. You could imagine the stench. You could imagine the behavior. You could imagine the, you know, whatever they, they, they have. You could imagine the obscene language. You could imagine the drunkenness. You could imagine everything else. Satan and his cohorts, they saw everything. They saw Jesus' body taken down. They saw they put him in the grave. They saw they sealed the tomb. And then party start. He done. He finished. It's final for Jesus. Hallelujah. But I want to say today, little did the devil know. That was Good Friday. But Sunday is coming. Sunday is coming. Come on, clap your hands. Sunday is coming. He didn't stay in the grave. Sunday is coming and he rose triumphantly. So they're celebrating the demise of Jesus. Because now the whole human race would belongs to him, the devil. And he will be in control. So if earth... It's like this now. You could imagine what that, if that really happened. And in the midst of the celebration, there were some thunderous footsteps coming. And that could only mean one thing. It could mean those are the foot son of God. All party stop. All music shut off. All, you know, body stopped talking. The place became silent. And the devil and his cohorts were trembling. The worst nightmare was about to, be, no, was about to happen when Jesus walked in. He walked into the room. He took the keys uh, that the devil from the devil and he stripped the devil of power and authority. Hallelujah. And he, the devil thought that he had it, uh, but Jesus stripped him. Uh, and Jesus, because of the resurrection power, he has now brought the keys uh, and he has given the keys to you and I. Uh, he said, this is what belongs to you, Michaela. This is what belongs to you, Dennis. You have power. You have authority because I stripped the enemy of every authority and power and I've given it to the church this morning. Hallelujah. This morning, what a resurrection. God is about to cause some dead bones to live. God is about to cause some dry bones. I don't care how dry the bones is like in Ezekiel. It might be the Bible says it was very dry. It means it had no moisture. It means it had no marrow. It means it was brittle. It was falling apart. When things seem far gone and your situation seems so far gone, it seems like it's falling apart. It seems like it's dry. It seems 
seems like you don't have life, I am here to tell you this morning, God is about to blow his breath. God is about to blow his breath. He's out of the tomb. The resurrection power is about to be blown in your life. And everything, every dry bone, every dry situation, every dry circumstances is about to live. It's about to live. And in that day, in the valley of dry bones, what took place is that when the breeze blow, when the breath of God blew, hallelujah, on the people, on the bones, over the valley, what happened? You started to hear click, 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 click. Bones, bones, fingers come to hand, hand come to arm, arm come to shoulder. And you know what? It didn't go to somebody else's shoulder and somebody else's arm. It went to his own. I am here to tell you, when God is about to do something, he will do it good. He will do it well. He will do it oh, unquestionable. He's a perfect God this morning. He is about to cause muscles and tissues and veins and, and blood to flow in every dry and dead situation. Like the valley of dry bones. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I tell you this morning? The resurrection power of Jesus will cause everything to live. I want to ask this morning, what is dead in your life? What part of your life that you need life? What part of your life we need life. We need, we need a power of the resurrection. Listen, this is the greatest power. It is the greatest power. It's the power of the resurrection this morning. The gospel, the good news. I want you to know that the, the resurrection reminds us that we have a work to do. Some of us who say, I don't work, I, I have nothing to do. Listen, we have work to do. When Jesus was resurrected, he told his disciples, he met his disciples and he told them and he commanded us. He said, you need to go out. You need to go out and preach the gospel. You need, gospel is Jesus died, Jesus buried, and Jesus is alive today. He's resurrected. That is the good news in a package. That is what we need to preach. Not Jesus died and buried, but the resurrection is the most important part because in the resurrection, there is life this morning. Hallelujah. He gave us the great commission because the resurrection has transformative power to change lives. And we who are the recipients of his grace and beneficiaries of his victory, we are called to share the good news of salvation to everyone. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Easter Sunday compels us to go forth and make disciples. This is what the whole resurrection is all about. Go make disciples. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God, the resurrection of Jesus empowers us to be ambassadors of Christ. He said, I give you authority in heaven and on earth. I give you the authority, but we're in the tomb still. Dev, we need to go out. And we're going out soon. I give you authority. I give you authority to therefore go make disciples of all nations. Teach them, teach these new disciples to obey the commands that I have given you. Matthew 28, 18 to 20. 
This is what the resurrection, it reminds us. There are souls that are dying out there. We are not so going to receive Jesus and keep Jesus. That is my Jesus, so I keep in him. No, the resurrection will give us. We can't stay silent. We will be like Jeremiah who says it's like fire that is shut up in my bones. I've got to talk. I've got to tell. I've got to share somebody that what I experience, that they need to experience it. We see the transform that transforming power in the lives of the disciples. The same disciples that were hiding, that they ran and hide. The same disciples, hallelujah, who denied Jesus and, 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 and you know, they were hiding. Now when Jesus was resurrected, these same disciples begin to preach. They were not learned men. But can I tell you, when the power of God hits you, you might say, I want to learn. I want to have my PhD. I want and have it, please. Do have it. But when Jesus is ready for you, all you need is the Holy Ghost. These men came, hallelujah, and they began to preach in the book of Acts. And thousands were saved daily, all because of the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. Signs and wonders because of the resurrection power. You got to recognize what is the power, whose power do I have in me? You have resurrection power. It reminds us, Jesus' resurrection reminds us that he is coming back Again, First Thessalonians 4, 14. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who would have fallen asleep. It tells us that there's going to be a coming back. Jesus is coming back with the saints. Listen, death is not the final sting. Since the resurrection, we would have stayed in the tomb. But because Jesus resurrected, when you see Pastor Raj die and lie in the coffin, hey, there's a whole new life after that. That is not final. That is not final. That is not final. Heaven is my home. Hallelujah. I'm about to tell you this morning that death has lost its sting. We sang the song, Get death has lost the sting. We have everlasting life with our heavenly father. I want to end this morning. We must not celebrate the resurrection once a year. But it must be, it must be living. We must be living in it. We must be walking in it. We must be have the resurrection power every single day, every single minute of our life. I want to tell the church this morning, it's time to activate. It's time to activate the resurrection power inside of you. Philippians 3 verse 10 says that I may know him. The apostle Paul is saying, I may know him in the power of his what? Resurrection. And the fellowship of his suffering being made conferable unto his death. Imagine the greatest apostle Paul penned those words as great as he were. His cry is, I must know him. I want to know him. I want to know God. I want to know him how? In the power of his resurrection. We may know God. We may know him, but we need to know him in the power of the resurrection. How are you so quiet this morning? Come on, clap your hands. There is no Christianity without the cross and the resurrection. It is the core of every believer. Every Christian believes and receives salvation, but you know, sadly, most operate, not operating in the fullness of the resurrection power available to all of us. We saved, we sanctified, we good. 
for we know operating in the resurrection power. I say it's time to activate it. The resurrection power is in all of us. You have it. You have it. All of us have it. You looking online, you're born again, believer, you have the resurrection power. But we're not operating in it. The anointing, the power of Jesus' resurrection that we have received abides in us now. But it takes us to activate it. It takes us, you know, to, 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 to remove the burden and destroy the yokes. That spirit that will do that, the resurrection power of God is the most powerful force in the universe. Yet it has no power in our life if we don't activate it. So you have power in you and I that is stored up. That we need to activate. How can we do that, Pastor Raj? Number one, believe it. Believe it. Believe that you have it. Believing is what activates the power in your life. You activate resurrection power when you allow Jesus to come into your heart. As Lord and Savior, you did that. Deliverance, forgiveness, being made right with God himself, and that's a lot of power. But you need to start believing that you have more. You have dynamite power. You have dunamis power. You have the resurrection power. And as we need to tap into that this morning and operate on the resurrection power. Secondly, to activate it, we must believe it and we must speak it. The resurrection power is residing in us and it will be activated through our words. So many times we speak defeat, we speak failure, we speak bondage, we speak things that will keep us in the tomb. We need to speak faithful words. We need to release the blessing. You have death and life in the power of your tongue. What you speak, what we speak. We could speak life or we could speak death. I am here to tell you the resurrection power is that we need to speak life. Whatever the situation, whatever our eyes might see, whatever it might be happening, we standing on the word of God. We standing on the word of God and we speak in life over every situation. Every time you speak the name of Jesus, every time you plead the blood of Jesus over a situation, Satan is reminded us of his defeat when Jesus rose from the grave. And number three, how you activate it is that you act on it. There's no mistake about it. Make no mistake. Satan's defeat was sealed by the resurrection. But you and I, we have to enforce it. We have to act on it. Because the same power, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you and I. We have resurrection power dwelling in us this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, let's stand this morning. Hallelujah. And I want you to praise God like you have some resurrection power in you this morning. Hallelujah. And Jesus, Father, we praise you. Come on, worship him, praise him, exalt him, magnify him this morning. Hallelujah. Not just the normal power. You have dunamis power. You have dynamite power. You have resurrection 
resurrection power. Power to speak and it happen. Power to cause the dead to raise. You have power to pray hands on the sick and they shall recover. You have power to put the devil under our feet. It's time to get radical. It's time to get radical and know that the power that we have this morning, the power that we have this morning is higher, is higher than every other power in the name of Jesus. Come on, worship him this morning. Worship him this morning. Worship him this morning. Come on. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Uh, hallelujah, Jesus. Don't let the we devil cause you, us. Hallelujah. Don't let the devil Glory cause us. Lord, Jesus, Arabasi, Arabaso, Torobohanda, Arababa, Yorobo, Si, Arabasanta. Jesus, Glory to God. We thank you for your Hallelujah. We thank you for your kindness. Oh, Jesus, we thank you because you are alive and not dead today, God. We are recipients of the resurrection power of Jesus. We stand in a place of victory this morning, God. No death can hold us down. No rain can conform us this morning, God. We have the power to tread upon serpents and snakes. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for your shed, oh God. The shedding of your blood this morning, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, mighty God. If I'm not dead today, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We bless you. Hallelujah. We say oh, yes, Lord, 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 yes, Lord, 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 yes, Lord, Lord, for your will and to your way, God. We say thank Glory you, Lord, God. God. Thank Jesus, you hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory Bow your hearts and pray this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to pray this morning. I'll ask Pastor Dennis to pray this morning. Hallelujah. We want to pray, God, that the resurrection hallelujah. power. I want Jesus. you to lift your hands this morning. Glory I want to you to God. lift your hands this morning and say, God, the Hallelujah. resurrection power is in me. I need to make activate it. it. I need to speak it. I need to believe it. it. And, I need to, it and I need to believe it and speak it this morning. Glory I want you to know this morning, resurrection Glory power is available to you. It's in you this morning. Pastor Dennis this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. We lift up, oh God, your sons and daughters today, God. Jesus. We come before a throne that is merciful Jesus. and ready this morning, oh, God. Glory, God. We heard your word and it came so Jesus. powerfully this morning. Mighty and this God. morning, God, we come up against dead marriages. Oh, we come up against oh, oh, We come up against lying oh, tongues oh, and evil, oh, God. Oh, Every spirit of necromancy and witchcraft, God. Oh, Every spirit of bondage, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God sin. Every generation of oh, curse, oh, Oh, Jesus, we're walking out. We're walking out. 
said, we walk in our chest. Oh God, Jesus, every grave close, every grave close. We say, move it, move it, move it, move it. Arabasi, Arabasoto, Rohanda, Erabasaya, Arabasi, Arabasoto, Santa, Jesus. And Lord, let your spirit move as it move on the waters, as it move in the wind. Let your spirit move in this place, God. Among your people, through your people, in your people, God. Minister, Lord, every need is different. Oh, God, let it be done according to your will. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us lift our hands. Let us be victorious in the presence of Lord. Glory we God. celebrate this Arab morning, hallelujah, so God is alive and oh, we are alive, Jesus, we are the victory power. this morning, resurrection we are power, resurrection morning, power, hallelujah. oh we hallelujah. thank you for the resurrection power this morning, hallelujah, Lord. this morning, hallelujah, the goodness of God just keeps running after us. Let's put our hands together and give the Lord the most thunderous prayer of hand clap and worship. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 We want to say thank you so much for those of you who have joined online and even for those of you who might have looked at this message even sometime after. We are faithful and we thank God for you looking on and being with us. We know that the word of God is alive and it will minister to your heart and your life wherever you are. We pray for the transformation and the love of God to touch you where you are and minister to you. If you're looking for somewhere to join, a place of fellowship, we welcome you to St. Clement's Tabernacle of Prayer Church where everybody is somebody and Jesus Christ is Lord. We thank you and we bless you today. Have a wonderful, safe, and victorious Easter weekend. May the Lord bless you and keep you. In Jesus' name, amen.